Hey guys, Logan from Popular Woodworking Magazine here. Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can build this flat file inspired coffee table based on an old industrial flat file that would have been used to hold drawings or maps. It's a pretty fun project. You can build it in a weekend and you can build it using Craig's new 720 pocket hole jig. So I wanna take a moment to thank Craig for sponsoring this video. And we do have drawings available for this guy so you can have all the plans to build it. They're available in the link down below in the description. So we're gonna jump right into it. So we're gonna start building our coffee table, our flat file inspired coffee table by breaking down sheet of plywood into case parts. Now the entirety of this case is gonna be plywood. We'll have two sides, a bottom, and then some top stringers. We don't really need to have a full sheet on the top of the carcass because we are gonna put a solid wood top on top. So I'm not gonna waste the extra material by making that completely solid. Now in your shop, you can go ahead and break down the plywood however you'd like to. Uh, in mine, I've used my table saw, I've used a circular saw, I've used my circular saw with a straight edge guide, I've tried a bunch of different stuff. And the thing I always come back to when I'm cutting sheets of plywood down is my circular saw, either with a track, uh, like the Craig track that's on this ACS, but when it comes to cutting the parts the actual size, I like to use the ACS table because it does give me uh, good control to make equally sized parts uh, across a variety of different cuts. But in your shop, you can use whatever you're comfortable with. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy set up. Uh, we'll make our side cuts first. Uh, we'll cut the sides down to size. And those are gonna be 15 inches tall. So we'll set our stops here. Okay. And I already have my dogs in place. Uh, the ACS works by giving you reference holes with these dogs and you put the dogs in place, butt your workpiece up against that and then feed it in until it contacts the stop. So you have a couple points of reference. So I have one dog here, then a short one underneath the track. Uh, and now we are set up to bring in our plywood. Now I've already broken apart the four by eight sheet of plywood. Uh, I just took the track off of the saw and used it to cut that down to a little bit more manageable size. So I have the sheet in, my sheet is butted up against those two dogs and it's tight up against these depth stops, so I know that this cut's gonna be at 15 inches. Now, there's a lot hanging off the table, so I'm gonna hold it while I make this cut. So we'll go ahead and make this cut, remove that piece, and then make another one to make two sides. Okay. So our two sides are cut. Uh, this piece that's left over is gonna give me enough for the bottom. Uh, but to cut the bottom, because it's 31 and a half by 33, we can't use those stops, but we can do it with the 48 extension stop. So let's get the side out of here. And we'll get these guys out of the way. And then the 48 inch extension just slides back here. Uh, and I can set that at 33 inches, which is the size of our bottom. And lock that into place. And now I still have my three points of contact. I have two dogs over here, and then this will be my stop. We'll get this little dog out of the way. Just put him off to the side. We can go ahead and slide this in and make that cut. Okay, so bottom and the two sides are cut. Now we can trim everything to its final length, which is gonna be 31 and a half inches. So we'll trim the bottom down, the sides down. Then I'm also gonna trim down some of the scrap that I cut off initially, and we'll use those for those top stretchers. Okay, so this final piece I cut is gonna be our two top stretchers. Uh, and really, it doesn't really matter what size those are. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just rip them into, uh, I'll just rip this one in half and then I'll also cut a couple more pieces to the same 31 and a half inches and we'll use those for dividers in the case once we install our drawers. So I think four inches will be good on these top strips and these dividers. Uh, so what I've done is I've turned these stops here around and now they reach underneath the track. What that allows me to do is use the opposite side of the rule 
Uh, and now it's gonna give me a four inch wide part when I make the cut. So we'll go ahead and rip a bunch of strips into those. Those will be the tops and the dividers for between the drawers. All right, so that is six strips that are four inches by 31 and a half. Uh, that will give us two dividers on each side of the flat file, and that will give us two pieces for our top. And with all those parts cut, we can head over to the bench and go ahead and assemble the case. All right, so now that we have all the case parts cut, let's take a look at how they're going together before we start cutting the joinery. So our sides are going to sit on the outside of the bottom. And we're gonna do this uh, to hide that exposed ply on the bottom. Now, yeah, we have the exposed ply on the front and back edges where our drawers are gonna go, but we'll address that in a little bit. Uh, so these guys are gonna sit out here like that. And then our dividers and our top pieces are gonna nest in between the two sides. And I think that's gonna work really well and it's gonna go together pretty quickly. So we're gonna assemble the case of this coffee table with glue and pocket screws. And we're gonna drill the pocket screws using Craig's new uh, pocket hole series. Uh, this one in particular is the 720. This is the 720 Pro. Uh, Pro meaning that it has these two wings with it, which is kind of a docking station. And Craig has changed a couple of things with this new jig uh, compared to their previous K versions, which I really like this one, and I think you will too. Uh, the biggest difference is going to be how it clamps. Uh, so this clamping mechanism here is a self-tensioning clamping mechanism. So you don't have to adjust the clamp for different thicknesses of material. You can put in two by material and clamp it with push of the lever, just like you can three quarter inch material, which I really like. And as I said, this is a 720 Pro, and that means it has this included docking station. Uh, you can see they fold up, they fold down, um, they include some storage in here so you can store screws, uh, extra bits, stuff like that. And they fold up and lock with a couple tabs. Um, but another thing I like about them is that they're removable. They come off the bottom and then you can use these guys as extra support for long work pieces. Uh, now the 720 standard has some fold out support wings, uh, but when we get to a part such as the size of this bottom of this coffee table, I'm gonna want support clear out to the sides and I can do that with these by just removing them and kind of placing them how I want. So let's go ahead and take a look at the back side here. Uh, and this is another thing that I really like and Craig has done a really good job with. They've included everything on the back for the pocket hole station. Uh, we have the bit, we have the drivers, uh, and then we have an Allen wrench that is included uh, to adjust the depth on here. And they've changed this drill bit just a little bit uh, everything is engraved now with laser engravings, and there's a hole in the stop collar so you can uh, slide the collar to where you need it, lock it down, and you can see what setting you have it on, which I really like that feature. In addition, uh, the wrench here has uh, a material thickness gauge, so you can go ahead and size everything using this, and obviously it doubles as your wrench for your stop collar. So I like those features as well. So let's go ahead and get this bit loaded up in the drill. Now I've roughly drawn out where these pocket screws are gonna go. The placement doesn't really matter. They're really there to hold everything tight uh, while the glue dries. And the glue's gonna lend a lot of strength as well as the pocket screws. So we'll just roughly place them. Okay, now we'll flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. Okay, so that is all the screw locations for the bottom into the sides. So let's go ahead and cut the pocket screw holes in these top pieces. Now here, again, I don't really care where these pocket holes end up. Uh, as long as they're in there, gonna hold everything tight. So I'm gonna roughly center it. And there are marks on here in case you did want to draw a center line to make sure everything's perfectly placed, you can do that.
Okay, there we go. So now we have the holes drilled in the top pieces and in the bottom pieces. We can go ahead and assemble the case. And I really like the fact that with this new Craig pocket hole jig, the only adjustment you have to make for varying thicknesses of material is your screw length and the location of the stop collar. Uh, because this clamps down to whatever thickness you have, it places the holes without having to adjust anything here. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear this off. We'll bring some glue in, we'll get these screwed together. Okay, when I'm doing an assembly, usually I like to have some form of stop so I can push pieces together, uh, just because these are, they're a little bit big to clamp. Um, and because I have the workbench here, I can go ahead and clamp down one of these divider pieces. And we'll use that as a stop. So I'm gonna put my side piece in here. I'm gonna make sure that, yeah, it looks like the better side. I'm gonna put the good side out. Even though this is getting painted, I don't wanna do a ton of filling on it. And then, that allows me to push the bottom up against that nice and tight, and we can drive our screws in. So I've already put in the long bit into the drill. I'm gonna go ahead and use the, uh, these are the inch and a quarter uh, soft plywood screws, soft woods slash plywood screws. Uh, it just means they're a coarse thread, so they're gonna grab a little bit better. So we'll use these guys, a handful of them out here ready to go. And then I'm gonna apply a bead of glue along the bottom edge. Uh, it doesn't have to be a ton of it. The screws are really gonna hold everything together as well. Uh, the glue is just a little bit of extra security. And then I'll stand that up, slide this piece in, kind of rub them back and forth to get that glue to spread a little bit. Then I'm gonna make sure that I'm pushing down into the bench with this corner and up against that side piece and make sure these edges are flush. So the edges aren't flush, it's gonna give us a little bit of a headache a little bit later when we go to install the edging. And I'm gonna work down this, uh, making sure I keep that same downward pressure on each screw hole and that it's tied up against that piece. Same thing on this side. Okay, so now we can install our top pieces. And these are just gonna go in right here at the corners and they'll pull everything nice and tight. Uh, I am gonna throw a clamp across here to hold the sides in while I screw these in place. Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna let this sit for a few minutes until it's glued, tacks up, and skims over. Then I'll come through, scrape all the squeeze out off of the case, and then we'll go ahead and install the dividers. So what I did is I flipped the entire case upside down, and then I used a series of spacers to space out these dividers. Then I kind of uh, froggy leapt to the next space up and screwed the next divider in. But what we're gonna do now is cover up uh, the plywood edges. And like I mentioned before, plywood edges just don't paint well. Uh, so when I can, I try to hide them with some solid wood. So what we're gonna use here is this stuff. And this is actually sold at most hardware stores in the trim section. Uh, it's sold as shoe trim. And this stuff's just poplar and it's gonna paint really nicely. Uh, and it's fairly inexpensive and it's already three quarters of an inch wide, about a quarter inch thick, and it has a nice round over on the sides. We'll spread a little glue along the backside. We'll go ahead and tip it up into place, rub it around a little bit to spread that glue. Then I'm just gonna use some painter's tape to hold it on while that glue dries. And because this is a true three quarters of an inch. It's a little bit wider than the plywood, which is usually just under three quarters of an inch. So I wanna make sure the outside is at least flush. If not, uh, a little proud, that way we can sand it down. And then we'll just put the painter's tape on and that will hold it in place while the glue dries. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and get all this edging installed and then we'll go ahead and concentrate on making the drawers. So now that we have the case out of the way, uh, we can go ahead and concentrate on the drawers. Now in a traditional flat file, uh, when it was in use, it would have been a 30 inch drawer that opened both from the front and the back side. And this is so when you had blueprints or plans or drawings in there, you could access it uh, from either side so you could have two workstations set up. But I don't think a 30 inch drawer is real practical, uh, especially as a coffee table. So instead we're gonna split this into six drawers that are smaller. They'll be about 14 inches deep and 30 inches wide. And I think that's a much more usable size. So I've already cut most of the drawer parts to size. Uh, the stock for the drawer boxes is just half inch material and it's three and a half inches tall. Uh, this is a pretty standard size that you can buy at most home centers. Uh, most of them will have some half inch material. I have poplar here. I did buy thicker boards and plan them down to a half inch, but a lot of times you can find half inch by three and a half inch material. Then you just have to make a cut. And I also cut the plywood bottoms. These are quarter inch plywood, and I broke that plywood down using the ACS uh, like we did for the case parts. Uh, the one thing that you have to note with the drawer bottoms is even though it says quarter inch plywood, it's not actually quarter inch. Most of the time it's undersized. So over at the router table, I routed a groove on the inside of all these drawer box parts. And this is gonna hold that bottom nice and tight. Uh, and to make that the right size, I used a narrower bit uh, than what the plywood says. So the plywood's quarter inch, you would think you'd use a quarter inch bit, but that's gonna leave you a groove that's just too big for that bottom. It's gonna be a loose fit then. So instead I used an eighth inch bit and I just made two passes and I double checked the fit in between and dialed it in until this groove sits over these nice and snug. So now to construct the drawer boxes, we're gonna use pocket hole screws. Uh, and we'll use the 720 again, but there's a couple other features I'm gonna to touch on. Uh, but first, looking at how these drawers go together, we're gonna have a bottom that is held in the front and the back, and then we are going to have the two sides. So the pocket screws are gonna be in the front and the back pieces, screwing into the sides. And this design is very nice because it allows us to have a good clean interior and you won't see any pocket screws. We're gonna do that by putting the pocket screw locations on the outside of the front and the back. Obviously you'll never see the back of the drawer, but the front you would see those. But we'll take care of that by covering up the entire front of the drawer box with a false front. So it's gonna work really well. Now to drill these pocket screws, we're gonna use the 720 like we did before. Uh, this is the 720 model, I took the base off, so this is no longer the Pro, this is the 720. Uh, and I'm gonna show you a couple different features on this, uh, this time that uh, make using it a little bit easier too. The first is I'm gonna include this guy. This is the dust collection blade. It slides in the drilling block. Then you can hook it up to a shop vac. Uh, that way it's gonna collect most of the chips as you're drilling the pocket screws. The second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap out this drilling block. So this is the standard drilling block that comes with it. But Craig also has this guy. This is a micro drilling block. Uh, and you can see the bit and the holes that it's gonna make are much smaller. Uh, and I like this, especially when we're using thin half inch material like this. Uh, I think this guy's gonna work much more nicely. So let's get that guy in place. Okay, there it is. Now we have to set our bit. And if you remember earlier, I mentioned how the Allen wrench that comes on the back of it has this gauge on there. What that means is you can use this guy, butt it up against the stock that you're using. In this case, this is just an off cut from one of the drawer parts. And you can see the edge of the drawer part is right in the center of that half inch mark. That means that I can use half inch uh, settings on the drill bit for this stock. So there's a little bit of variance there that the half inch setting will work for. So we'll go ahead and adjust this guy. Then Craig also makes a clamp for the 720 uh, and this slides in right here. And then you can clamp this to a work table or a workbench. Uh, my workbench top I think is a little too thick and I think I can hold this in place because these parts aren't terribly big. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the shop back hooked up and we'll drill these holes.
All right, because we are drilling into half inch material here, uh, we've went ahead and sized down the screws to three quarter inch, and these are the fine thread for hardwoods. Uh, even though this is poplar, it's still a hardwood. We want the finer threads, uh, so it'll drive in a little bit cleaner. So we are going to kind of follow the same steps that we did with the case on this thing. Uh, but here I am going to use the plywood as a registration to make sure that these grooves are all lined up and I'm gonna glue this joint and then drive the screws. So now I'm gonna work my way around the outside of this drawer and then do it six more times. Okay, so the final thing to take care of before we bring all these parts back together and assemble the flat file coffee table is gonna to be to cut the top to size. Now you could make this top, you could glue it up out of construction material, two by sixes, two by fours, and they give you a really cool industrial look. Uh, but quite honestly, with the prices of lumber right now, uh, buying a glued up panel that was an inch thick was just as cheap, so that's what I have here. Uh, so I've laid out my cut line, and we're gonna cut this just with a straight edge guide uh, and a circular saw. But to get a good, clean cut, especially with a circular saw, uh, I like to first lay out my line, and then I'll grab a utility knife, and then just score those top fibers. And that's gonna avoid a lot of chip out that you could potentially get if you were just gonna make the cut with a circular saw blade. So we can go ahead and get the straight edge guide in place. Lock it in place. And slide those out of the way, now we make our cut. There we go. The edge is nice and clean. Now, if you want, you can round it over. I might just break it with some sandpaper, but then it's ready to install. Okay, so I have the case all painted and I just sprayed that with a water-based milk paint. And I think it looks pretty good. So now what we can do is install the drawer cases that we just put together. To do that, we're gonna use a couple spacers And we're going to install the drawers with a pair of ball bearing slides. And positioning these can get a little tricky, but that's the whole point of these spacers. I'm going to set this guy in there, and I'm going to line the front edge of the slide to a mark on the inside edge of the case. That's going to give me a three quarter of an inch setback for the slide. And we're going to need that because the false front of the drawer is actually going to sit flush with the front of the case. So once I get this in position, we can go ahead and hold it there. I'm gonna hold it nice and tight up against the spacer so it stays level. And then I can go ahead and extend the slide out. And that gives me access to the screw holes in back. Then we can screw it into the case. Now, when you go to install a drawer onto slides, it kind of becomes a balancing act because you gotta hold the drawer up there and position it and then have a hand free somehow to screw in the drawer, the slide into the drawer. Uh, and it's usually kind of a mess. But Craig has these installation guides that really help. You can position them on the case uh, using a set of spacers, clamp them in place, and then the drawer just sits on there, which is really nice. I appreciate that. Uh, and I can position the drawer in relation to the slide, get everything nice and situated, and then both my hands are free uh, to attach them to the slides. Now, these can be used to install the slides inside the case if your face frame's a little narrower. Uh, these are just a little wide. I thought it'd be easier to use the spacers. So at this point, we can go ahead and install these. Okay, so now we can go ahead and position the false front. The false front is just a piece of a three and three quarter inch wide hardwood that I've cut to size, and this is a nice fit for inside of that opening. And I sized it so there's an eighth inch reveal all the way around, or an eighth inch space. So to position this guy and get it attached, we're just gonna screw it in from the backside. But in order to hold it on there and position it, we're gonna use some double-sided tape. 
We don't need a ton. I'll just use probably two strips, one on each side. Okay, now we can press the drawer back into place. And this is where you kind of have to be careful because we want to make sure that this is in the right spot before we push it firmly onto the drawer. There we go. Now, tape's going to help hold it on and in place while we drive screws from the back to mount it. Then we can install the hardware and we'll talk about the top. All right, there we go. So the stainless steel hardware, uh, it's all brushed. It really completes that industrial flat file look. And it really ties in with these steel industrial casters really well. So now the last thing we have to do is attach the top. To do that, we're going to use these. These are figure eight fasteners. What these do is they tie in the case to the top while still allowing the solid wood top to expand and contract with changes in humidity. We'll use a four center bit and we'll drill the location for the anchors. And we're drilling pretty shallow here. We just want that figure eight fastener to be slightly below the surface. Okay, there we go. So those final screws up through those figure eight fasteners into the top locks everything down. Now all this thing really needs is a good clear coat on the top and maybe a coat on the inside of the drawers, then it's ready to go in your home.